Hello Year 10s. Uh, this is the first time I've done a Zoom recording, so please bear with me. So, what we're going to do is we are going to look at a lesson about work done, energy transferred, and power. There will be some calculations involved, so you're going to need to get your calculators at the ready. So, work done, energy and power. So, what I'm going to do is share a screen with you. That screen here has your PowerPoint, the PowerPoint that I've attached. So, I'm now going to place that on the slideshow. Get a bit of that on the side there. And I'm going to click through this. So, First thing I'd like you to do is look. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should have set that set that up right from the start. So well, the first thing you're going to have to do is try to jog your memory of what you can you remember. I'd like to write a word equation that shows the relationship between gravity, mass, and weight. Name two factors that affect the gravitational force between two objects. And if a woman has a mass of 65 kilograms, what is her weight on the moon? And gravity on the moon is equal to 1.6 newtons per kilogram. So, just give you a chance to scribble them down. Hopefully, you had your book with you. So you could actually look at question number two if you'd forgotten. And also you won't be able to work out number question number three unless you know the relationship between gravity, mass and weight, which is weight is equal to mass times gravity. And we've got two factors that affect gravitational force between two objects, and that is the mass of the object and the distance. The larger the mass, the greater the gravitational force and the distance. The closer you are, the greater the gravitational force. The further away you are from the object, the smaller the gravitational force. Now this final one should be quite simply 65 times 1.6 and you can find out her weight on the moon is 104 newtons. So moving on. Right, we'll look at the relationship between work done and energy transfer. By the end of this, you should know how to calculate work done on an object, explain why work done and energy have the same units, and also calculate the work done and power transferred in a variety of situations. So, work done and power. Let's simply have a look at these, try and jog your memories. What are the following measured in power, force, energy? What's the gravitational force on Earth? And what is the difference between mass and weight? Um, you'd make a little note of those, have a little mental a few thoughts about them. I'm going to ask you the questions. But this time we've just got to wait for the answers. Power is watts, force is newtons, energy is joules. Gravitational force on Earth, that's G, and that is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So, what that means is if you put a one kilogram block in close to the gravitational field near the Earth's surface, it will pull down on it with a force of 9.8 newtons. Went through that in a previous lesson. So what's the difference between mass and weight? Well, mass is the amount of matter that you're made up of, and your weight is the force of attraction that's pulling you in a particular direction. So you can take your mass and then multiply it by the force of attraction of gravity of whichever gravitational field you're in and that will give you your weight. So what this means is that your weight varies. So what is work, what is power and so we this. Well, moving through this. Work done is actually energy transferred. This means the units for work are the same as the units for energy, joules. What that means then is if a person does 500 joules of work, then 500 joules of energy is transferred. 
In the same way, if a person transfers 250 joules of energy, 250 joules of work is done. Now, we can actually look at this. I'm just going to try and share this then. So I'll share you. Uh, this video and hopefully you're getting this now this is free science lessons i'm showing you here a man putting a bottle on the floor the boss is traveling at a constant velocity the man's applying a forward force to the box the bottom of the box and the floor. This friction causes the temperature of the box to increase. As you can see, the chemical energy store in the man's muscles has been transferred to the thermal energy store of the box. Now, whenever a force is used to move an object, energy is transferred. Scientists call this work, and we calculate work using this equation. Work done in joules equals the force in newtons multiplied by the distance in meters. And a key point is that the distance must be in the line of action of the force. And we're going to see what that means later. Now, you're not given this equation in the exam, so you do need to learn it. So, this bit's really important. Is this idea that we have uh, work done is equal to force times distance, but also we've got work done is equal to force times s, where s is displacement. And what we're saying is that the distance must be in the line of action of the force. So it's basically in two dimensions. So if we take, let's say, a point here and a point here, what we're talking about when we're talking about the work done is an idea that we are just talking about the movement from this point to this point. Not the complete distance travelled. So this is why I was saying this is why we're saying that work done W is equal to force times displacement because the distance must be in the line of action of the force. So, let's get rid of that. Remember that work is simply a measure of energy transfer. So, the unit of work is the joule. When a force of one newton moves an object by one meter, then one joule of work is done. Now, scientists also use the unit newton meter. And remember that one newton meter of work equals one joule. Going back to our example, the man's applying a force of 20 newtons to move the box by two meters. I'd like you to calculate the work done. So pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, remember that work done equals the force multiplied by the distance. In this case, the force is 20 newtons and the distance is 2 metres. Multiplying these together gives us a work done of 40 joules or 40 newton metres. Here's another example. This shows a car travelling with a velocity of 20 metres per second. The driver applies the brakes and the car comes to a stop. So what happens when the car brakes? You need to remember that a moving object has a kinetic energy store. This shows the brakes of a car. Given braking, the brake presses against the wheel like this. The force of friction now acts between the brake and the wheel. The kinetic energy store of the car is transferred to the thermal energy store of the brakes. So the temperature of the brakes increases. And at the same time, the car slows down as it loses kinetic energy. So here's a question for you to try. During brake, Oh, I'll stop the video there because he's talking about work done, but he's relating it to a question about energy transferred. Now, what we were saying earlier is work done 
is actually equal to force times displacement. So what we've got to remember here is that force is actually an energy pathway. And right from our first unit, when we were looking at energy pathways, looking at energy stores and how they get moved around. Well, force is a mechanical pathway that energy uses to move around. So when we've got any kind of force, what we're doing is we are transferring energy, transferring energy by mechanical means, if you like. In this case, what he was talking was he's talking about the kinetic energy in the moving wheel being transferred to thermal energy in the brake pad. And here we've got this transfer, and that transfer is our force being applied by the brake. So, In a force of 3,000 newtons as applied to the brakes of a car. The car takes 15 meters to come to a stop. Calculate the work done. So pause the video now and try this yourself. Okay, the work done equals the force multiplied by the distance. Multiplying 3,000 newtons by 15 meters gives us a work done of 45,000 joules or 45,000 newton meters. We're going to look now at one final example. This shows a person walking up a flight of stairs. We're going to look at the work done in this case. Now this person's moving upwards. In other words, they're moving against the force of gravity. Remember that the force of gravity acting on a person is their weight. So I'm showing their weight here. Imagine that the person has a weight of 600 newtons. At the top of the stairs, the person's moved a vertical distance of 5 meters. The work done in this case is 600 newtons multiplied by 5 meters. This gives us a value for the work done of 3000 joules or 3000 newton meters. Now this brings us to a key point. Remember that the distance must be in the line of action of the force. Because weight is acting vertically downwards, only the vertical distance is relevant in this example. So if we look at this, I'm trying to take this. This is the important thing. The vertical distance, which is here, is the one we use. We don't actually use this distance here. If you like, that's the total distance that the person has moved. This is the displacement of the person. So we don't want to use this here. Don't use this. Okay. So I'm going to clear all that. Clear all drawings. To mouse. In this case, the person's chemical energy store has been transferred to the gravitational potential energy store. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on work done in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. So, oh, we know that work done can be calculated by force times distance moved. The force is measured in newtons, distance measured in meters, work done is measured in joules. So work done is in joules, and that's because it is energy transferred, because a force is involved, and our force is our energy pathway. So, moving through this video then, you can do this little calculation here. The cyclist pedals the bicycle with a force of 1,000 newtons, moving it 250 meters. So what we can quite simply 
do is to calculate the work that's been done. It's force times distance. So it's 1,000 times 250, which will equal 2,500 joules. Now, if we just notice at this point, we've got quite an easy example. However, in a lot of cases, these easy examples in the exam, they do ask you to put them into a number of significant figures. In this case, it's two significant figures. If you look at the actual question, the most significant figures of the data that you've given is two. The actual answer can only be really to two significant figures. It is in this case, but look at all the zeros. What we've done here, we've used kilo, which is a prefix. So, Moving on. So, I'd simply like you to do this in your book, please, if you could draw that table up and identify whether each one is true or false. That would be fantastic. And if it is false, you need to highlight and say why it's false. So, moving very quickly on to power. And we've got a short practical to do here as well, which you could do in your home. So, Power exerted by an object can be calculated using one of two equations. Power is equal to work done divided by time taken. You need to make a note of that. Now, remembering that work done is equal to energy transferred, then, okay, we've got two equations, we've got one equation there. So the other equation, if it's power is equal to If we've got power is equal to work done divided by time, then since work done is equal to energy transferred, we can say that power is energy divided by time, which you give, well, you're expected to remember, and you'll see this on the equation sheets, as power is equal to E over T, and it's just moved around because they usually express it as energy is being equal to PT. Um, moving on, there are some examples to note here. Please note here, 10 kilojoules, so you'll need two. Make a note here, that's 10 kilojoules, so that's 10,000 joules. Moving on, this is a worked example. We've got another worked example to follow on your PowerPoint. That's sent and attached. And then you've got a couple of questions here. Now, experiment. So you're going to find out how powerful you are. So you're cycling your book's power. And you need that table. So title in your books. Power. Power there. So you're titling your book Power, and you'll need this table. Now, what you're going to do is find out how powerful you are. So, what this means is you are going to, first of all, measure the height of your stairs, top to bottom. Do you need a tape measure? Or you might just want to do the height of your first flight of stairs. What you're then going to do is you're going to then run up those stairs and time yourself. So you run up, time yourself. Since you know your height, you can find your weight 
by placing yourself on the weighing scales to find your mass in kilograms, multiplying that by 9.8, and then you can find your work done and divide that by the time it took to go up the stairs. Now, I'm not actually sure there. How is that clear? So, what you're going to need to do is you're going to find out how powerful you are. You're going to find out your power. You need to do a few things. First of all, you're going to need a timer. You're going to need your bathroom scales. What you're also going to need is some stairs. Now, what you're going to do is you are going to stand on your bathroom scales and it will give you a mass in kilograms. Take your mass and multiply it by 9.8 and that will give you your weight. <clears throat> so, once you know your weight, your weight is the force. Now you need to measure the vertical height of your flight of stairs. That's your displacement. You can then find out the work done by times in your weight, which is your force, times the height of the stairs. So this is your force, your weight. Don't forget to multiply it by 9.8. And the height of your stairs is the displacement. Once you've got your work done, what we can then do is we can find power. Since power is going to be equal to your work done, divided by time. So that's the time it takes you to run up those five stairs. So that's measured in watts. So look at this. This means then is you can find your weight times the distance, so that's your weight your mass on the bathroom scales times 9.8 times the height of the stairs, which is displacement. That will give you your work done. You can time how long it takes to run up the stairs. And then if you take your work done divided by time, that will find you your power. Now, if you do this twice or maybe three times, you can then work out an average, okay, your average power. So, so Following on from this, there are some questions to go on the PowerPoint. To determine work done and power. I'm going to suggest that before you do these, you actually attempt these ones, which I've also attached with the PowerPoint. Just got the link to this video in. So I will be work doing the work solutions to those uh, and I will send them in a second link. Okay, I think that just about finishes it for now. So thank you very much. Let me know what you think. Um, is it worth coming on with Zoom?